We're here with Eric. We're gonna do a long-awaited Vivian episode. We're here with Eric. We're gonna do a long-awaited Vivian episode. Oh, this is gonna be a Vivian 2.0. We can talk about why it's a 2.0 now yeah. and why it's not a Tundra and all that stuff. I'm gonna get him one of these things because it's a little windy. Taylor's here, Enzo's here, and we're at Fiesta Island, Eric's uh, hometown. I think it's been a long time since I've talked with you guys, but hello, I'm Morgan Clark. This is Eric's Tundra. So it had two different wraps on it. It had a orange and black or gray, and then it went to, to all like, like a graphite. Very minimal cage, minimal back half. Jabir Fab, front end still on here. It's been through a bunch. Let's go gambling! Aw, oh, dang it. Aw, oh, dang it. Aw, oh, dang it. Aw, oh, dang it. Oh, yeah! yeah. So Eric's had a couple rollovers in this thing. Yep. And I know it's been the talk of the town to talk shit. And no, oh, we're gonna roll it. Uh. And I'm, you're my homie, so I'm gonna defend you on that. But at the same time, the truck was a little sketchy when it was a Tundra because the rear axle housing and the track width on the rear was a, a foot narrower than the front. The front, yeah. Kind of makes it like an ATC, but backwards. Right. Went to LS Fest, we, we talked before that, and you're like, we had a couple options. It was, let's build another truck, because you always want to build an F100 Super Cap. Yeah. Uh, or can we cab swap the Tundra? Yeah. And then it went to LS Fest. Yeah. That's my nemesis. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna we're gonna 86 yeah. LS. Two Fest. rolls and I don't do good on that clay. It went straight from LS Fest up to us. Yeah. So you got the cab quick. Yep. And then that was the plan. And original we, plan was just cab swapping, right? Yeah. So just the cab swap. We weren't gonna go crazy with wheelbase, fix anything. Cage it maybe in interior cage it that's it and then it just snowballed into an entirely different truck exactly in every way and it's you know I know it's fun for people to say it's still the Tundra but I think the most prominent part of this thing is the Jubera front end yep like the front bulkhead yeah. there's a little bit of the fuel tank basket back there and then really what ended up happening is this thing was 135 inches long right. wheelbase <laughs> length we cut all the chassis from the front and the engine cage removed the middle section left a little bit of the rear fuel tank basket and then it's like we had the opportunity why not put nice pivots in there, mm -hmm. shorten it up, make it trophy truck length, yeah. and then we just built the whole entire chassis out. Um, so it's it's essentially a new truck. Yeah. Uh, big fuel tank, 75 gallon tank, uh, big motor, Our big You know what this is? It's a perfect example of someone that starts with something and tries to just keep getting it better and better throughout the involvement of owning the vehicle. And this was just like a seven year, eight year of just Eventually, it just, it just became, we have to go full, full. This essentially is where you end up if you want maximum go fast and maximum handling. Like you end up with 125 inch car, 94 inch track width, uh, big shocks, you know, proper trailing arm ratio with the shocks. These are Blitz trailing arms. Uh, coil over living right about here, bypass living in here. Uh, we can check that stuff out. Yeah. Two inch cage, uh, all kinds of lacing going on, triangulation. 
know, same through the rear. I don't know where we start. You have to do something. People want action. I'd say we start with the um, beginning, like basically a new chassis from Jubera Fab back, right? Absolutely, yeah. So what that looked like, you can see Jubera center mount in here. And you know, I say Jubera frequently here because I don't want to discredit them. Yeah. We did rebuild the crap out of this truck, but no matter what, that suspension and their steering and stuff has held up. We we built new upper arms out of chromoly just because there was a failure. Yep. It's not unusual that an upper arm fails, um, but I just want to make sure they have credit because this yep. thing is, the front end of this thing has really never changed. Yeah, well, the know? other thing he did was Jubera gave us um, the actual CAD file so we could recut out all the arms and everything and do it all in chromoly before it was a mild steel arm and all things like that. So um, Morgan even built these arms out of that CAD file and welded them up and yep. put them all together. And he also put in extra bracing and extra things where the bump stop would hit and things like that to make it even better. And this Jubera Fab was only supposed to allow a 2.5 coilover and you re-engineered that too. So it is a true 3.0, 4.0 bypass you know, configuration, which you probably couldn't do unless you re-engineered that wheel there too. Now, like Eric said, um, this was originally, we were running a two and a half coilover. So now we're three inch coilover. Four, four inch box and then you can see it's also swing steer so there's a steering box in here with uh, Jubera's own like extended sector shaft here which is a big extension from the sector shaft and I think that's that's their own like machine part mm -hmm. you know so you can run a regular four bolt box up there and then bolt that thing on yep you know and it, it it's like holstered down there below the skid plate with a ram assist with a ram assist yeah so it's a complex system uh, cycles 24 inches clean all day um, really, you can see that whole bulkhead assembly. What I mean by that is all the plate work here, um, the vertical plate work here, the horizontal plate work holding the upper arm, all that stuff is original Jubera. And what we did is we essentially stripped, I think even the tube stuff, we left some of that, new shock mounts, left the bump stops, um, and then just engineered off that. So obviously like all the skid plate stuff you see here, the new bumper that we added, that's all just a build off. You can see there's like stringers, one inch tubes here that are kind of blocking the steering. Um, same with side skids, big quarter inch front skid. That's a happy place for dents. We also things. did all trophy truck hubs, trophy truck, you know, bearing snouts, all that stuff. That all got upgraded when you did that too, so. Yep, so that's all JMR stuff. Um, big six piston calipers, um, big hubs, big all hub. trophy truck, everything. Yep. Um, some of the, like the tie-in to, kind of bring this back into the second version because um, one of the things with engineering Vivian is we did make it a slip cap or a cab consumable chassis. So we did kind of a, a if not when Eric rolls or whatever. We didn't want to worry like, oh my God, we're going to silicone bronze and sheet metal all this in and then it's going to be this terrible thing we have to redo so much yep. if the cab experiences rollover. It was, it was more than just if or when. It was, I wanted to drive the truck 
without a worry, you know what I yep. mean? So if you have a, a luxury pre-runner, then everything's absolutely perfect and interior all that stuff, you're not gonna wanna drive it so hard because you do not want to mess it up. And I wanted to be able to drive the truck at my full limit, and this way, it took you, what, three days to swap it over? Four days. Four days, In yeah. But that's including getting this cab prepped and back on. Yep. When we built this thing, we built it where the whole cab unbolts or it, you know, it's a rivet situation. You drill out a bunch of rivets, you take all the hardware off, it slips on all the body panels inside of here. All these guys are removable. You can kind of see like the layout of rivets but everything comes out. So really this thing strips down to a bare chassis and that's why we're gonna integrate kind of V1 and V2 with this thing. Yep. Uh, and that's what I was getting to, to, to tie it back in is the additions um, on this second version of Vivian. You can see there's some sheet metal additions that kind of match the rear sheet metal treatment. Like all of this raw stuff is all new enclosure. Um, getting the reservoirs, getting a win with the reservoirs like that and running parallels, parallels. that's all stuff we kind of added you know, when we revised it. The other thing we had to do is we had to redo a ton of all of this stuff. All of the substructure, like the grill mount, the light mount, the radiator mount, that stuff, no matter what, you can't save it. If you crash the weight of the truck and the G-forces, you yep. build it out of two inch, it's still gonna bend because it's an outer extremity of the car and it's a consumable. Yeah, we don't wanna forget about these fenders. So um, Morgan's guy came in and clay molded these fenders to fit our configuration, our, how wide the truck was and it would fit a full trophy truck width. Um, so that's kind of a one of a kind thing that you like, spearheaded, you know, to make it right. Yeah, so sand sports, when we brought this thing originally, I had we had smaller McQueen glass on it. The glass was good. Yeah. It's just the track width, and it's not a beam truck. So the camber curve at compression, it's not stuffing the top of the tire in deep. It's not pulling it in. Probably could have got away with it was a beam truck. Totally. And so I had this crazy, like, like one of these guys, you know what I'm saying? One of these cuts. <laughs> Uh, many conversations about like, dude, we gotta fix the fender. Yeah, we gotta, because Eric's a hot rod guy. Yeah, so. well, the big, the, you know, you wanna have a look, right? Like, yeah. you wanna look back at your truck and come up to your truck and be excited by the way it looks, and that was a key factor, it just didn't look right. So, Mario shaped these. My buddy Mario, he's a, his whole career path is a clay sculptor for automotive companies. And um, he has an F100 himself. He's an F100 guy, he's got a Bronco too. Um, so he made the right bulge, and now you guys can purchase these through McQueen, but you can see the fitments proper. Um, and this this tucks like we tested with this it all works out um, this is you know another thing that's the that's part of our our second gen program yeah. uh, same with the bed sides the bed sides are revised so they don't have any cut in them this is just how you get them yep. minus this this overlay and that's really when you're running a shortened wheelbase program um, that's the win you get and I love the style points on this yep. we did extra style points and then ran the trim adverse onto it yep. Um, so you can see there's just a good medley of breakup on here. Yeah. I think one of the signature things on this thing is the exhaust. Yep. Uh, that was really a functionality thing. There was just nowhere to put it yep. because the chassis was full, the shocks were registering into the trailing arms down here. Where do you put it? It's straight piped. This is a four inch. The only thing that if you start looking at this that you can't unsee is that might look like a woman's boot. <laughs> print you know what i'm saying you know what i'm saying <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you know the other stuff is like a lot of the extraction uh, this is just for air and dust it's a nice detail to hit on this stuff you know added to the to the bedsides too continuing on the lights back here ambers yeah. squadrons one two an s2 flush in here you can see eric's rear view camera and then the i've been doing this on a couple cars too but this rtl bar is in its own little wing back here. All this stuff is pretty standable. Uh, but you can see this this just tails off the profile of the roof. It houses the light. Um, and it's just a nice flush mount. It's a nice treatment, mm -hmm. especially if you just have tubes coming out of here. Um, a lot of the ventilation here, the extraction, like you can see there's coolers in here. Um, so there's a cooler hiding on the driver's side and the passenger side. Mm -hmm. There's a third cooler that you added, right? That's yep. another trans cooler. Yep. Uh, there's breathing through here, breathing here, and you can just see there's a lot of exposure of tube kind of coming out of the panels, and then this chop back window. That's that's something that has to happen a lot of times when you're running your shocks inboard of the cab. Yep. Um, you run out of window real estate, at least on the lower portion. So 
This is factory glass that's just cut up maybe four inches. Right. Uh, it still fits. It's still got a nice register. Something else we did too is you can see all this bolt area down here. So this whole sill, this lower window sill, that was one of the things that was welded that we had to cut to swap the cab. And now next time around, if something goes heinous, um, we just unbolt that area and that whole like lower windowsill comes out. Got this it. was originally going to be like a, a trough for a speed, a Robbie speed case, a uh, tool kit and like any soft goods. If Eric wanted to go on big trips, he could just stuff back, like stuff stuff back in there. Um, same with like a Yeti cooler or something, but we just wanted to try to maximize any space we had and get kind of a trough back there um, where you could just stuff stuff in and strap it down and be good. And I'm sure some of you have seen this, but you know, this is kind of our time to show this up close and personal. And I don't think we've done it for Terror Channel. Uh, I know like I've covered it and you've yeah. covered it, but it's really to go through this thoroughly. So if we're all over the place, I'm sorry. You know, we're at the beach and it's <laughs> a Saturday a lot, a and we're about. just covering the truck. So this thing's transformed massively. Um, Eric's put the time and energy into getting this thing right. And yeah. you know, we test with Keith I can't stress how important it is to do shock tuning yep. and testing. You can build a bad machine and it still, it can work half of good as it's supposed to. Well, even you know, well, this is V2, right? And we still improved V2. Yep. Um, we did different shock package, different spring rates, bigger coilovers. And then we did a different sway bar. Actually, Keith came in, way scaled it, did a sway bar equation, a geometry, and actually found out we had too heavy of a sway bar on there and redid the sway bar. And oh my God, what a difference. Yep. I mean, you hit a corner, it leans over and just grabs and digs into the corner. You stay in the two tracks so much better. You can slide the car around. We did Barstow and I was going full wide open third gear and I was one handed around the turn through the whoops and before I would have been death grips. Still around. not advised to go one handed. Yeah, but <laughs> when I realized I was one handed, I'm like, oh my God, this thing yeah. is, is so much easier. Very predictable. Yeah, very predictable. <laughs>
uh, there's 43 inches of this frame. And then you can see everything past that is all tube chassis. This is just like your, your last portion of boxing and then it transitions all into tube. You know, something else to think about is a lot of this is built on a diet. So, well, it's hard to tell because there's like panels, but a lot of this tube work, there's, there's 95, there's 065 and then there's 120 on the mains and that's wall thickness so really this car um, it's only 5800 pounds wet which is easily 400 to 600 pounds lighter than a trophy truck yep i'm sure people would love to know about the mirrors yeah so the mirrors are something that the eric's cab came with came with yeah this is the second cab that's what they came with we got it ready for speed metal a lot of people saw it out there and they're like keep the mirrors keep the mirrors what did you say when you first saw it with the mirrors terrible terrible yeah Yeah. i mean and they grew on you right i know i listened to you and i listened to the people <laughs> yeah. and that's it that's it yeah because i still don't know if i would run that but i know that it fits the bill now yeah which this is like a it, it went from like an old world war ii bomber with like a some kind of aviation kind of heritage yeah and now it feels like a really nasty farm truck yeah farm, yeah exactly and, and so i get it and i think the, the cab patina uh everything so eric asked if we could revise the mirrors uh, make them sturdy and add our touch to them but still retain them and that's what we did so we obviously left a lot of this stuff which looks like stuff you'd use you know to have a garage door hanger in your Original, garage yeah, or something yeah. <laughs> Um, and then we revised it. We used like a clamping method that just looked kind of period correct. Added the Baja Designs lights on there. Yep. But really like the struts are purpose built struts. Um, they're like left and right hand thread. You can adjust them. And then we built like a landing plate here or a base plate. So everything's kind of period correct. Yep. Um, they are functional. We sat in there, made sure they're usable. Uh, made sure that the lights are not in the way when you're sitting there. Mm -hmm. Another thing we added was the sheet metal headliner. Yep, that's new. That's V2. That'll all get upholstered, uh, but we still gave it that two-tone for now. Yep. Some of the stuff that we use brand-wise, we're using S-Pod for all the lighting. We only use S-Pod or these switches for lights, no the ignition, things like that. Uh, running all manual switches, manual um, relays and everything like a trophy truck would have for your fuel, uh, fans, ignition, all that stuff. So it's very easy and user friendly if you need to go back or you have a problem. We're running the Holly EFI throughout. Um, we're running all PCI um, headsets, things like that. Um, all PRP seats, uh, a third seat um, that's put positioned up higher. So that keeps, you know, real easy to see out especially for that third person. That's um, probably your most comfy spot. Definitely. Is the third seat. And uh, Morgan did dead pedal, like dead foot pedals on everything. Even for the third seat has a dead pedal. I have my own dead pedal and the passenger has his dead pedals. Um, these door panels you did, how you can, you can open and close them really nice, easy to pull. These are power windows. So you, you push up and down and it goes like, it looks like a crank, but actually moves it up and down. You did the cool latch um, custom your deal with the latch opens up the door really well there uh, there's so many cool like little touches that you would never see like just even the door has venting here this whole just looking at this is so beautiful um there are just so many little key little things for it we even have tabs for if we want to put window nets in this thing and make it a race truck and now also the tundra used to be remember the position of the seat my foot pedal would be way over yeah a lot of center mount trucks they they get into this foot position thing because the motor is so scooched back just out of necessity yep. that you end up being, you know, yeah, way you scooched side. over here or something. Um, so trying to preserve all this space, we were trying to get four seats in this thing and that was the intention from the start, but it just, no, yep. it doesn't work. You know, especially if you see all the real estate in the corners here, see the dead pedals that we're talking about. But you can uh, see the, the shock mounts shock back Shock mount here. window openings. And you can see the viewing windows and the service panels for your coilover outside. Uh, handbrake, that's that's new V2. Yeah, so that was a request from Eric too, is to add a handbrake. Oh, that thing feels way better than way it did. Better now. Huh? Yeah. It grabs. So you know, this is this is your perspective from third guy, uh, middle seat. Yep. I would say this is the most comfortable and safest place to be in this thing. Mm -hmm. Um, there's obviously like there's a lot of foot room. We planned all this out like all of this stuff is spatially um, Laid out so it works. It's tight, but it works um, Another thing is the upholstered dash. Yeah, so the you know 
as much as you do that for style points, the real purpose of like upholstering the dash, especially with Alcantara or suede, is to delete highlights and reflection and glare. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a purpose built thing. So when the sun's shining in here, you're not getting any kind of highlight or reflection. You can focus on driving. Aero tubes, those are definitely your signature there. They are, yeah. So all the cage stuff we do, we add um, streamlined aero tube for the intrusion bars. Um, you can tell it's thin, but it's also purposeful. Um, it's shaped, you know, if you guys don't know what aero tube is, it's also called streamlined tube, and it's essentially teardrop shaped chromoly. It's got a major axis, which is like a larger diameter and then a smaller diameter. Um, and we use this just in specific areas. You couldn't use this as a prominent roll cage tube. Right. It's very similar if you think about. I don't know if you've ever done that where you take an empty like soda can and you stand on it and it's strong and you can put your whole weight on it and then if you flick it, um, you know, you do a, some kind of a lateral load into the can, then, well, that's a weird thing, <laughs> <laughs> then it'll crunch and it's the same thing like these kind of areas, you can add lateral support because they're not having infringement where something's going to load it from the side right. and crunch it. Really, the only thing that's wanting to come down is pressure points from the corners mm -hmm. and pressure point from that top tube and it's pushing directly on that. Yeah. So it's just, it, all it needs is a little strut to hold it up. So it's a good detail. Um, this thing's extremely cozy. It does have an adjustable seat here yep. for Eric. So and, and sliders. Yeah, sliders on passenger and driver. And then it's got that like a two and a half inch raise um, for you to be able to see proper. Mm -hmm. uh, again, you know, it's all removable. So all the rivets you see in here, like all this stuff is is to actually secure the cab versus something where you'd see like uh, just sheet metal with silicone bronze welding everywhere, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so it's, it's a matrix of stuff to hold this thing on, but it's it doesn't move. I think maybe the next step for Eric is to put AC in this thing. Mm -hmm. That's what AC, we talked about. We might do fire suppression for sure. Yep. I keep, you know, save your investment, make sure that's good. Um, upcoming things, we're gonna patina paint all the fenders to match. Um, and get it like nice and, like I said, vis visually looks good to me, you know? Yeah. Make it look nice. Um, engine, we did on V2, Morgan addressed a lot of the cooling issues and it is absolutely so much better. Like even driving down here, my temperature on the water temp were so much cooler. This motor, if you guys don't know, it's a LSX 454, but nothing is, it's, it's not a stock motor. Robert Maruzzi built this thing from the bottom up, um, custom piston, custom rods, uh, Frankenstein heads, big, huge cam. Uh, we're talking like an 825 horsepower all motor monster with a 4080, which a lot of guys don't know. I have a four speed so I can cruise on the freeway. But yeah, Morgan did a bunch of ducting to encapsulize the radiator and force feed all the air through it. And it is insane how much cooler it is right now. I might add a, one more oil cooler just for engine, but I gotta really push the truck and see first, because right now it's staying cool, and we're in the mid of the summer right yeah. now, and it's doing great, so. Let's, uh, let's talk more about that, and let's let's take the hood off yep. so we can see Show everything. The engine, so. That's a built-in door bar impact mount. Definitely got this from RJ Fab. We just put our own twist on it with some design, um, but this thing's really great to hold like a snap-on impact. You just kind of, buzz it into there and it holds itself and buzz it off and it's already got the socket and that's the right size for your lug so you're good to go and this thing was a tundra rear mount radiator yeah uh it was having problems i think it was because it, it worked for an ls1 or an ls3 and then when you put the big 454 in there it was hot and, it, and then when it got hot it wouldn't get better and right. we just couldn't fix it. And I'm a glamorous guy, right? Yeah, so that it's a sand bog just puts a lot. It's of like a 20% more load of all time power. 100%, 100%. So we opted for a bigger radiator, put it up front. I think the only thing you have to think about when you're putting a big radiator up front is if you're leaning it back more, the air wants to go parallel into the into the fins. So if these fins are vertical here, then they want parallel or air or perpendicular, whatever. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you're doing that, I think the thing we missed, because it was running hot still, yeah. and Clint at CBR is like, just direct the air. Like, just make it where it doesn't have anywhere else to go, and it, it is directed in. Yeah, or so, speed it in there. Yeah, and so just these perimeters on the side, those partitions, they match the hood. And so it's one of those things where it'll work like this, and obviously there's a ton of air coming at it like this. And then we took the hood, and we had these lower cutouts but then there's this opportunity here, if we add a little bit of height on this thing, 
and that's going to pull more. So out of these, the crest of that radiator is right on the top of this thing, so the actual hood is not flopping around anymore. So we kind of got a 2.4 with that. The motor, it's it's based off a of 454 LSX, but it's it's like a dart block or a Brodix block. Uh, Frankenstein heads, 460 cubic inch, and it's probably the nastiest NA LS I've ever been in or driven in an off-road car. Um, it's been solid now. Yeah, big torque numbers, big horsepower numbers, this thing rips, man. So added an oil cooler, that's kind of hidden in there and it's still running. It's running through the vents here. And vents on the hood. And the vents on the hood. And three fans sucking it in. Yep. So a lot of this, like the same thing, that wasn't there. We added that thing. Mm -hmm. um, I think the breather we added too. Yep. You know? Remote and, oil um, filter, stuff like that. Yep. It's hard for me to talk about one of our own vehicles because I don't want to be, I don't want to seem like we're boasting about like our thing, you yeah. know, like I like to talk about other people's cars because I can look at it and I can find that passion into what someone else created and I don't want it to come off like I'm pushing an agenda with this thing. So it's tough for me to, to nail it. But I think stepping back with Vivian, I think one of the greatest things about this is it is something where you gave us an opportunity um, and we got to essentially create a fresh vehicle. Yeah. People can say it's a half, in, it's a, a reconstruction or a recreation but it was a lot of car it was a full chassis there was no body on it there was no panels we plumbed the whole thing we wired the whole thing yep. you know assembled it all the bolts all the stuff yep. um, the thing I noticed is there's tons of little details um, there's a lot of like what I'd call Easter eggs in this car and and what I mean by that is like if you just start looking at little design features you know instead of <laughs> instead of having uh, you know, like rubber grommets for the pins through here. Uh, we put face plates. <laughs> How you doing? Uh, you know, little touches. Ghosting the lights in here. Bumper details. This also has a removable like push bar, like an OG pre-runner bumper. Yep. Um, Eric had, when he got Zach's truck, the Ranger, he's like, I wanna race Vivian. I'm gonna race Vivian. We're gonna do the Mint. Was it the Mint? Yep. Okay. He's like, I want to bring it to you and I want you to put like big bumpers on it where I can like hit stuff yep. and do a bumper in the rear, do window nets, put a bumper in there. So we did all that and it's not on here, but like this thing is prepared. If we wanted to race it, yep. you can race it. Um, KMC wheels, yep. you know, your classic 40 inch Baja TA race tire. And you know, move, move back and just the actual symmetry, the look of it, the, how the short wheelbase, the it's still an extra cab. I mean, that's my favorite shot of it, right, right to the side of Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Insane. And nothing like it in, out there right now. And the, the thing to note with that is the way you get this proportion is not by making it look like that, just to make it look like that. It's because it's a trophy truck proportion. Yeah. It's because it's a 125 inch wheelbase. It's because it's 94 inches wide. It's, it's exactly where trophy truck stuff would be. And it's the same with the shock locations and the seats. Yep. You could really, if you took this all off, it yep. would look like a trophy truck. But we wanted to have the function before the form. Yep. And then the form that followed with it being this functional is this. Yep. I think one of the greatest things too is it's street legal. I get enough of a taste of it where Eric owns it, but when we get to work on it, like I do a systems test and I drive it home and I get to go on the freeway and it's plated and registered and insured yeah. and you put your headset on and you just cruise it. Cruise it, yeah. So why don't you run through with us what you want to do with the paint? I'd love for you to kind of talk about that and what the direction is for the paint because we all want it to be patina. Yeah, and I love the blue and white two-tone. It just looks like farm truck to me and I want to stay with this patina um, and just continue it along on the fender. So um, you guys all know doing a patina, you could wrap a patina, try to digitally print it and, and fake it, but it's just going to look fake. So what we want to do is paint it and make it look real. And I have the perfect guy, Nick at Loose Cannon Custom. This is one of the best airbrushers, I think, bar none, and definitely in San Diego, maybe best in the top five in the world. Yeah. And so he's going to airbrush it, paint it, pit and rust, and try to copy the same theme across it. 
and make it look right, you know, make it look where you can be right up next to it and go, oh my God, that's a sick ass patina truck, How, you know, but when you start touching it, it's actually paint. Sure. Um, the um, molding, he's gonna actually airbrush new molding into this, uh, identical, and, and, and mimic the, the, the actual two-tone of that, so you'll, you'll continue that along, so that'll look really sick. So I can't wait to see the finished product there. Um, and then we did the roof spot. I think we're gonna put a couple, a little bit of color in there, some red and white in there. Um, I'm thinking about doing the beadlock rings in red, uh, red to get the red, white, and blue American theme going on there for the farm truck. I've been thinking about making a removable stock front bumper. Yeah. Uh, with carriage bolts and those four bolts to That's the bumper, take it off, and you know you can have that for truce and hot rod. So you're, like you're saying you'd put a removable front bump on here that's like a stock chromie? Yeah, stock chromie, use, this, use these same four and use carriage bolts and modify the chrome bumper that use, just goes and unbolts right off and, yep. and it just perfectly fits right. So That'll be sick. That'll look sick. Uh, something to note if you guys you know are asking or you haven't figured it out, this thing is a definite Baja Designs truck. Yep. Uh, been a privilege to work with them on a ton of vehicles. They're, they've, they've taught us a lot. <laughs> they have. Yeah. And there are people, I think they're the pre-runner people. They are. So yeah. like Wes and Kyle, thank you guys. Yep. Um, LP6s, these are DOT LP6s, S8, S1. Uh, and then what you don't see in here is there is so many service lights. A lot. I want to say there's 26 or 28 map and service lights, meaning little rock lights everywhere. There's literally three zones. There's a front engine one, interior and back, so you could have a ton of lights on. Yeah, and it's really functionality. Yeah. It's just, it's one of those things at night, like I'm a firm believer in putting service lights everywhere you can, especially in the hot spots. Like we have them above, we have them all suspension corners, then we have them all down the trans tunnel, um, everywhere where a shock is, everywhere yep. on the inside motor area. Like the engine bay has two shining down just on the engine. Yep. So then it's like, if there's an issue at night, you flip all that on yep. and then like you and your buddies get out and you just go scope everything out. What's wrong? Yep. Where's fluid coming from? You know? I've had to do it already. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys this is Vivian uh, it's been a long time Coming. it's uh, nice to host it's been a pleasure this is Eric's local spot and this thing's been a huge thing of growth for me too I've driven several trucks like a handful of trucks and I wouldn't say I'm like a, I'm well versed in a ton but mm -hmm. this has been one of these things where uh, it's at a level where it performs as fast as you can react yeah. meaning that the truck will do anything yeah. but your brain is the victim as to how fast can you push this thing exactly. you know just like he said you can push as much as you want to give this truck it'll take no, it's insane and another thing i want to say is keep coming over and hit me up every time you see me in this truck i mean it's so amazing how morgan documented this through his youtube channel his instagram my instagram this truck has its own following and it's it okay, is it's okay. incredible how many people come to me and they know every single thing about Vivian. It's, I just love it. And people come to the shop, just want to talk about it, want to see it in person. It just blows their mind. It blows my mind that it has such a great, um, it means a lot to a lot of other people other than myself. So that's, that, that's what I love about it. Yeah, I think it's important. I think the story is important and it's like the people's truck. Um, you know, it keeps coming back and there's something to be said about that. Yeah. And I think it's been a growing lesson with, um, with Eric and your driving and your experience. And, and you know, it's, you gotta think how long we already had this thing for two seasons straight before it had a rollover. Yep. And that was a bullshit rollover. Yeah. So it just, um, it's been a learning tool. Yeah. And it's awesome to see her. And if you guys don't know, Eric's a retired skater. Where are you from? San Diego. San Diego? Um, and so this is like his, this is his new tool, you know? In skateboarding, you know, you have to crash, you gotta fail, you gotta get hurt uh, to get better. And that's kind of how I treat my driving. I, it is a bummer. I do have some rollovers and have some things like that, but I, it pushes me to get better, makes me a better driver. And also you building the truck, we make the truck better each time. Yep. And every single one of these things have made this truck more user-friendly, more predictable, better. and. It does suck financially, but um, if it wasn't such an expensive thing, I probably would push it even harder. But I do say now I have learned
learned a little bit. I'm probably going to keep it on two wheels a little better now. Yeah. Um, and use it more what it's used for, a pre-runner, go have some fun, go to car shows, enjoy it, let people enjoy it. And um, when we go racing, we'll race my son's truck and, and we'll push it super hard. So, so really, we just wanted to cover this thing the best we could. Uh, if there's details you guys see on here that you want us to go over, or there's something we mentioned that we didn't cover, leave a comment. Uh, we'll definitely go through them, whether it's Eric or myself, we'll cover it uh, and we'll bring it back up or take care of you if you have questions. Um, really documenting this and then we'll follow up, we'll do another update with paint looking fresh or looking patina and fresh and go from there. This thing's going to be ready for a very nasty desert season. Uh, all the shows, all the trips, big air, whoop sections, going fast, loud noises, all the stuff. I want to watch you get out of here. Thanks, Eric. Later, dude. Later, guys.